Max, welcome. Um, so uh, investors went from super duper excited about buy now, pay later and a lot of fintech to very, very scared. But underneath the surface, let's talk what's happening. It, it seems like your borrowing costs, at least up to this point, have remained relatively stable and you seem to still be confident about how you're managing the business and approving individual uh, transactions. Has anything surprised you about the quick shifts in this economic environment? Thank you for having me. And, uh, you know, I've, I've learned over the last three years to be surprised by nothing from the global pandemic to all sorts of uh, surprises. I think part of my job is to make sure that the company can navigate whatever choppy waters we face clearly. And the reality of the business is that we're doing extraordinarily well. We just posted our fifth beat quarter. We've announced a clear date for profitability. We're still growing in nearly triple digits in all the categories that matter to us. And so, you know, all things kept equal, a firm is doing great. Um, the market will have to sort itself out over time. Are you cutting costs? Are you cutting employees? Klarna, a competitor, announced some cuts and you said some months ago, several quarters ago, that when uh, a downturn or a slowdown hits, that's when we're going to see uh, who's wearing a swimsuit and the tide goes out. Um, so how does it look? Uh, exactly, exactly. Good memory. Um, no, we're not cutting employees. We are very confident that our strategy of growing responsibly, underwriting every transaction, making sure that our unit economics are extraordinarily strong, is the right path. The reason we're able to announce a profitability date is because we've always had plans to become profitable, just sort of an important save the dates that we felt like uh, declaring to the market. But no, we, we are uh, quite certain that uh, we do not need to uh, start breaking glass or hit red buttons or anything of the sort. And you know, perhaps my competition does, but uh, yeah. that's what them turns are all about. You, you do paint a different picture than some of your competition and the results as well showed in your quarterly earnings. So, Max, what separates a firm from other buy now, pay later offerings? Is it the technology or the algorithm that is different? Can everyone do this with the same risk? And, you know, how can investors and consumers who want to use this offering tell the winners from the losers? Obviously, I'm biased, but uh, first of all, thank you for asking this question. I think vast majority of people talking about the BNPL, writing about the BNPL, just lumped the entire category into a single bucket, and that's just fundamentally lazy. A firm is very different. From the very beginning, we said, it doesn't matter if it's a six-week transaction or a four-year transaction, you have to underwrite. You have to look at a person's capabilities of paying back, back what they borrowed, and if they can, then you should be able to lend them money. And if they cannot, you have to compassionately decline them because mm -hmm. overextending consumers is the exact opposite of what, what you want to do, especially in a downturn. Our job is to give consumers their spending power back to improve their spending power, but only with the ability to get repaid. Mm -hmm. And yes, we have been building technology and data over the last decade. We've been really, really careful about our partnerships, about promises we've made, about prices we charge both consumers and merchants, all in the service of building a sustainable business. And yes, we are quite different. It's technology. It's probably most importantly the mission, the fact that we've never charged a penny of late fees, the fact that we've never resorted to terrible things like deferred interest. It's all built to be sustainable for all parties.